Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I love finding affordable ways to DIY a variety of things. Money can't buy everything, except maybe figures. I love collecting figures and recreating iconic scenes. Every figure deserves to shine on my display. So every week I ask myself the same question and answer it by creating something I'm proud of. Join my weekly adventure by subscribing to my channel. Leave your feedback and suggestions down below. I often get inspired by your comments, and I hope I can inspire you too. Last week, I fixed my Scarlet Witch figure and updated my DIY Westwheel display. It's one of my favorite videos. Check it out if you haven't already. I normally reply to comments, but I was a bit anxious and was overwhelmed by all the supportive comments last week. But I assure you, I read every one of them, and I feel much better about my voice. Thank you so much. So I was looking at my Marvel Legends figures, and there's one figure that I really like. And it's the Iron Man Mark VII figure from the first Avengers movie. The mold is perfect. It looks just like the movie. But something about it has always bothered me. It's kind of silly. It's a shade of red they used on the figure. It has more of a cherry red. But in the movie, the red is way deeper and has more of a cool tone. I want to fix that and make it more metallic. So, can I make it? So I have this red here. On camera, it looks the same, but in real life, it's more of a Christmas red than a cherry red. Let's do a test to see how it looks on the figure. Let's paint on a spot where it's not going to be very visible. Oh, you can't really see the difference on camera. I swear it's a cool red. Okay, I'm going to mix a bit of black with this red to deepen the color a bit more. Let's try again. Ah, there we go. Now it's showing. That's the color I want. Okay, let's proceed and paint over all the red bits of this figure. I'm painting with a very wet brush. The paint is quite diluted. I personally like to paint with thin layers because I find that it dries smoother. If the paint is too thick, it can dry too streaky. It's also a bit easier to fix mistakes with thin layers too. However, the runniness is a bit unpredictable at times. It'll just do whatever it wants, so be ready for anything. Another thing with thin layers is that the effect is so gradual, sometimes it doesn't feel like there's any progress. So I just kept painting and painting and painting and painting. Oh, uh, it's dark now. Oh no, oh no. It's now way too dark and looks dusty. I wish there's an undo button in real life. I would control Z maybe a few times here. But I'm not gonna give up. I think I can still fix this. I'm gonna apply a thin layer of varnish over it. It will make everything look glossy again. And it will also protect the paint from scratches. Please work, please work, please work, please work. Here he is all varnished. Whew. He looks better than a few moments ago. The varnish helped a lot. And I also did a bit of touch up to make the red a bit more vibrant and less dusty. Now the suit looks metallic. Next, I'm gonna go over the gold bits with my gold paint. This should add some more sheen to the gold paint. Ta da! Here he is all finished. I definitely like the darker red a lot more. The back could use a bit more red, but the front looks great. It looks heavier too, like an actual armor made out of metal. I was worried that I ruined this figure, but I think he turned out fine. And he'll look great in photos. Let's see. Wow, these photos look really really good. It looks high-end and expensive. It doesn't even look like the original Marvel Legends figure. Nice. I could end the video here, but this figure is now too awesome not to have a display base. Now I don't want to do the New York battle scene, because I don't have all the Avengers. Besides, it would be too huge to replicate. Instead, I want to recreate a very specific scene. I remember being amazed by this particular scene when I first saw it in the theater. When Tony landed on his Stark Tower and walked back to him while having his armor being removed simultaneously. So, to recreate that scene, I'm going to build a 3D model of it, because I love 3D things. This is going to be so cute. I envision it to be roughly the size of my hand, so it can fit nicely in my display. I know in the movie it was technically Mark 6, but Mark 7 is so much cooler. It's the Avengers suit. Everything's looking good so far. Let's print it out and build this. Here it is all printed. 
time to cut, 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 and fold, fold, fold. 3D modeling brings me so much joy. It's actually my first real passion. If I never randomly took that 3D animation class in high school back in early 2000s, I wouldn't become who I am today. Computers back then couldn't handle that much, so animators would have to find alternative methods to achieve certain effects. That taught me how to think outside the box. Another thing I learned is understanding how lighting works and where to place the light. That knowledge translates very well to photography. I can talk about my love for 3D animation all day, but I'll save that for another time. Back to this display. Everything here is printed on cardstock paper because I needed to hold Iron Man's weight. I'm also attaching a piece of cardboard at the bottom of the walkway just in case. Now here's the main piece of the display. The circular mechanical rings that followed Tony as he walked. I decided not to make them full circles, but more of a horseshoe shape. The flat edge at the bottom would be much easier for me to glue onto the display. Now with everything all ready, let's put them all together. Let's start with the rings. Nice. I got the most important part working. Now let's make it fancier. Hiya! Hiya! Yay! Of course Tony's gonna have his name on this building. And one final piece. Hiya! Okay, it turned out way bigger than I anticipated. This is way bigger than the size of my hand. But it's so beautiful. Look at it. It may look simple, but there's a lot going on. It looks like a real structure. Now let's put Iron Man on it and see. Ah, it scales nicely. I normally like smaller displays so the attention stays on the figure. But I feel like in this case, this works nicely as a whole. Look at this montage. so much fun filming this bit. There's no bad angles at all. Alright, time to take some photos of this awesome display. The angular corners contrast really well with the circular rings. The rings draw your attention straight to the figure, making Iron Man the main focus. The cool tones of the display also work really well with Iron Man's warm tones, making the gold bits pop. The thing I really like about the display is that it looks so dynamic even though nothing is moving. What do you think? Give this video a like and comment down below. Do you like how the figure turned out? What about the display? Isn't it the coolest display ever? I've made displays for my other Marvel Legends figures too. Check them out if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed. I still have so many ideas I want to try. Stay inspired and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.